This is the first tool I made on my lathe. Now this is a simple boring bar, and it's actually set up as an internal thread cutting tool. As you can see, this little chunk of high speed steel has been ground to a 60 degree point as you would use to cut threads on the lathe. The way I made this whole tool is I basically just drilled a cross hole and then filed the corners so that a square tool would fit and also drilled a hole in the end and threaded it with just a tap for a 832 set screw. A lot of people have asked me about this and it's, it's, it's literally that simple. This is um, a really handy tool and it's, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. I mean, I just told you how, how to make it. This turned down portion was actually more me practicing turning a, a drill rod in my lathe uh, not long after I got it just to see how, how well it would turn. And uh, yeah, worked pretty well. But it's not necessary at all. It does not need to be turned down or anything. Uh, I've had people ask me why and what the dimensions are. That's not critical at all. I've even taken that concept and translated it to a more general purpose boring bar. And this, I retained the entirety of the diameter. And the funny thing about it is it's comically long. I had a, a cockamamie idea for <laughs> uh, a really, really deep, boring project with this, and uh, I mean, yeah, anybody who's, this was, <laughs> it's whippy. But you can still choke up on the, on the boring bar and retain a lot of rigidity. So it's still perfectly usable. I could just lop off uh, part of it. But these two boring bars, I got the design idea from a man uh, whose name is David Gingery, Gingery. He has a series of books on actually making your own uh, metalworking machines in your shop with an aluminum foundry. It's very fascinating, and for a time, I actually really wanted to try them. Uh, but his his idea for a boring bar, and I'm not sure if it's his uniquely. That's just where I got the idea. It was exactly this, and uh, his was uh, based off the premise that you don't even need to have this in a tool. A post or a tool holder on a, on a cross slide or a compound rest, you could actually have this just in a drill chuck and, and make your hole bigger by advancing the high speed steel tool out, uh, much like the boring head on a mill. So this could be adjustable as well if that's a feature that you have a, a use for or a desire for. But as you can see, those are two high speed steel uh, internal boring bars, and this one is what I have used to cut every single internal thread that I've cut on my lathe. Um, up until uh, just just the other day, and I actually ground a internal thread cutting tool out of a square blank, and uh, it seems to work pretty decently. But I made this other boring bar as well because I've I've acquired these brazed carbide boring bars. You get them from the tool suppliers. They're very inexpensive. And uh, these all fit in my 3.8 uh, boring tool holders. But the problem with these is, uh, I think I fixed this one, but these will actually, it bends right here. I've had, I mean, I'm not running hardly any, any power on my lathe. I don't have a, a high horsepower lathe. But they'll catch, and I, I, I'm sure it's operator error, but this weak spot right here seems to, if uh, when cutting hard materials, especially like when I was cutting the 17.4 stainless steel, it, uh, it it puts a lot of pressure on there, and that just seems to be a real weak point. And especially now, this is a really really long, boring bar, so you know that kind of comes in with its own problems. But like you know, here's here's one that I want to see a dentist about that. That one's broke. This one, it, it works okay. But I don't, uh, I don't get great results with these. And uh, is that my fault? You know, maybe. Um, but, but with these, I do. So I actually, instead of spending the money on those, I, I tend to prefer these. Now, as an aside, I also have this. I've used it in a number of my videos. I call it the world's cutest boring bar. It's actually cobalt. 
and it's pre-ground. I've, I've sharpened it a few times, uh, but <laughs> this thing, uh, for, for as hilariously small as it is, uh, works amazingly. I, I love it. It's, it's brilliant. Anyway, I have this piece of 3 8 drill rod that uh, I figured, well, let's just chuck it up in the lathe and, and make one of these real quick. You can see exactly how easy it is to knock one of these little guys out. Uh, you know, um, this, again, this was the first, the first, one of the first things I made at all, and the first tool I made on the lathe, and it's, uh, it's just, it's a really handy little project for, for, you know, a, a novice like me. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's try it out. Now the first operation is basically just going to face off the one side of this piece of drill rod. This is in preparation just to drill the hole that will end up being our set screw that holds the tool in place. This can be done on both ends just for cleanliness's sake, but it's really only necessary on this end just to make sure that we're drilling a nice clean and straight hole. Now this project is pretty simple and straightforward, and I, I really want this to be kind of geared towards more the novice, or people that may not even be familiar with machining, but like the idea of using a metal lathe for other creative works. And once you get into being able to make your own tools, uh, you know, you, you're kind of, you know, limitless just as far as what you can do with a, with a lathe like this. So now, as you can see, I've center drilled, and now I'm running a tapping drill through the end. And we're running that deep enough so that we'll have clearance for our tap to go all the way through. Uh, a tap, you know, you need to run it pretty far up the shank so that it cuts a properly sized thread to full depth. Now this tap I have held in the drill chuck on my tail stock, which is loosened. Uh, and just free sliding on the beds of the, the lathe. And then the work holding chuck, the headstock, is disengaged from the motor so I can turn it freely by hand. This is an 832 tap, although it's worth noting that I did end up boring this out and retapping it for a quarter by 20 for um, uh, just a few reasons. I just happen to have more of those laying around anyway. Now to drill the cross hole. This is where the actual cutting tool will be held, and I could do this in my mill, it would actually be uh, probably a little bit easier and more precise, but I decided to do it on my drill press just with a simple vise, and I started with the center drill, that's a very handy tool for starting just about any hole precisely, and then ran it through, this is a 3 16 inch bit, that's because the high speed steel tool that we're going to be putting in there is 3 16 by 3 16 so this way we're <laughs> getting as close to our size, all we have to do is file out the corners. It's worthy of note that I got the hole almost perfectly centered in this round stock on the drill press, but just by eye and using a center drill. It's, it's more difficult than if you use a mill, but it's definitely not impossible. Now to file out the corners, I have a box file here, a square, four-sided miniature file, as well as a three-sided file here, and all we need to do is square out the corners and flatten up the sides. This is the most time-consuming part of the entire process, but at the same time, it's really, it's not even that time-consuming. I think this took me maybe 10 or 15 minutes in total to get all the corners squared up. I'm using a bench vise here, but you could also clamp it to any sort of work-holding uh, setup you can think of. Clamp it to your bench, hold it in some angle locks, anything like that. You can see that square hole start to form. Now, there are obviously more um, precise ways to form square holes using brooches and things like that, but this is, uh, you know, easy enough for the novice. Being a more novice-oriented project, you know, it's never a bad idea to spend some more time with some hand files and really uh, go slow and, and check and perfect your work. And this is test fit number 50, the only one I end up showing. And you can see it's not an entirely perfect fit, but it doesn't really need to be. We just need a little bit of clearance in there so it can slide through without uh, too much slop. And you can see there, that's the quarter by 20 threaded hole. And there's our square hole. You can see how well it's lined up. Again, it's not 100% perfect, but it is as perfect as we need it to be for this project. This little quarter by 20 bolt I've had lying around it ends up being a perfect fit on the end and gives us a little bit of clearance towards the front. If you were drilling into or boring into a hole that had a blind bottom, you may want to consider using a 
screw of some sort that gives you the most amount of clearance so that the cutting edge of the tool is as far forward as it can be. But as you can see, it's that easy, that straightforward to make a simple boring bar like this. It, <laughs> it, it can have a variety of different types of cutting surfaces and uh, obviously a variety of uses. But uh, the real proof is in the pudding, so let's see how it cuts. And this is just some aluminum. And I believe I bored it out to one inch with just a drill bit, and we're just running it here at, a, I believe, about 900 RPMs, and just taking some nice light cuts. Now, obviously, because of the lightness of the cut I'm taking, and, and uh, you know, probably things about my actual tool geometry and grind, I'm getting a little bit of a stringy cut, a stringy chip, which is never ideal. It's, uh, it, it can actually be quite dangerous if you're not careful. So that's one thing to note, but that's kind of a whole separate <laughs> idea, is, is your shaping of your tool and your cutting angle and your geometry and all, all that nature, as well as your feeds and speeds. But as you can see, as a boring bar, this works really well. It's actually amazingly rigid, and it takes a nice, deep, clean cut. So anyway, if you enjoyed this, feel free to subscribe to my channel and check out my other home workshop videos. I have a lot of stuff like this, a lot of DIY and other sorts of making stuff. Thanks for watching.